So here's another video from Shaky Hand Productions. And it's really proving in an op amp that V plus equals V minus for an ideal op amp. I've done this uh, using KCL and uh, nodal analysis, but there's a book, just show it to you, Intuitive Op Amps by Thomas Fredrickson that maybe there's a more intuitive way, even though there's uh, still some algebra. So if we look at this, I just have V out, R2 and R1, they're in series. I can calculate Vx with voltage division. And if that's a little bit confusing, hey, I can just redraw it, V out, R2, R1, voltage division. Well, if I put this in the op amp circuit, I minus in an ideal circuit, because Rn is infinite, is zero. So from the perspective of Vx, it's really just V out is the, it's uh, like the input, and Vx would be the output, and it would you just get a voltage division equation. All right. And again, I've just rotated it if that's a, you know, having it is a little confusing. So Vx is just V out R1, R1 plus R2. Well, then we use our op amp. We're keeping the gain, uh, open loop gain finite at this moment, but, you know, V out equals the open loop gain times the difference between the two inputs. We substitute equation 2 into 1. And we get Vx, open loop gain, Vn, because Vn is tied into V plus, and Vx, because Vx is connected to V minus. Here's our voltage division. So now I have Vx equals open loop gain R1 divided by the sum of R1 and R2. I've just propagated that through. All right. I keep working that, and I'm just going to solve for Vx. Right, Vx equals open loop gain R1, R1, R2. Okay, and what you notice that is if I allow the open loop gain to go to infinity, right, this is a lot bigger than 1, so it drops out. So this cancels with that, and you are just left with Vx equals Vn in an ideal case. Uh, and a real op amp with a finite open loop gain, there's uh, a small voltage there. Now let's do this for the inverting. Again, I have Vn, R1, Vx, R2, and V out. Before I had a ground here, now I've actually got another input. And there's two ways you can do this. You can use a nodal analysis, or you can use a uh, superposition. For a quick super re position review, let's just use that. So I'll short V out. Vx is just the voltage division of R1 and R2. Right? I'll short V in. V out, or Vx is just the voltage division of R2 and R1. I sum the responses, and now I have that equation put it into the op amp. This I negative, still zero. So that Vx relationship we solve for up here, still true. Alright. We use our handy dandy op amp equation again, but in this case V plus is zero, or ground, because it's tied that way, and V minus is Vx. V out becomes V out minus open loop gain Vx. We substitute 2 into 1, and we get and solve for Vx, okay? Well, if I let the open loop gain go to infinity, this whole term goes to 0. So Vx equals 0. Let's try a fancier circuit. I have Vn, and I've got two op amps. Oops, I'm so sorry. 
apologize. I have two op amps. And you might get, you know, kind of confused. But here's the thing. This V out R2, R1 is just like the non-inverting that we solved for before. Right? I is zero in an ideal op amp case, I negative. So really, R2 and R1, there's just, Vx is just the voltage division of V out. So I get Vx, V out with the voltage division here. Right? That's equation one. And it's just like equation one from the uh, non-inverting op amp case. Well, now I've chained these two op amps together. So V out equals the open loop gain of the difference of the inputs on U2, which when you substitute it in the circuit, it's just open loop gain times Vx2. That's Vx2. Right? Then you substitute the open loop gain of the next stage. All right? Vx2, what does that equal? Open loop gain, the difference of the inputs on U1. All right? 3 into 2. We have V out equals open loop gain squared of Vn minus Vx. In the non-inverting example, this just wasn't squared. Alright. So 4 into 1, solve for V out. Or solve for V. We have Vx minus V out. There's our Vx equation again. We substitute that into our voltage division equation. We get V out, uh, V in equals V out, 1 over the open loop gain squared. All right. And we let open loop gain squared go to infinity. Well, that's, of course, going to drop out. And you might say, well, why do that? Well, it'll. here's the thing. This goes, open loop gain squared goes to infinity faster than just regular open loop gain. So when that goes to zero, we get this equation. We can manipulate it to where we get the not classic non-inverting stage. Let's try another one with a diode, a logarithmic amplifier. We set up our KCLs, right? IR1 equals ID1. We use our Ohm's law. In this case, Vn minus Vx divided by R1. And the diode current is approximately equal to this equation, and it's Vx minus V out, because that's the definition of positive current. We substitute all that, and we can get equation 5. All right. Then we use this op amp equation again. All right. It's inverting, so we're going to get V out equals minus AVOL Vx. Let's put in Vx. 6 into 5, okay, and we can see, excuse me, is that if we let open loop gain go to infinity, this term goes to 0, this term goes to 0, we're left with this equation, and we can rearrange, and we get the classic logarithmic amplifier topology. Let's try an even fancier circuit where we've chained two op amps together, but we've still got the same logarithmic part. Well, since I, zero, I here is still zero, our original KCL is still the same, right? But instead of V out equals minus AVOL VX, we now have V out equals minus open loop gain squared VX. Substitute it, and what happens is this goes to zero sooner than if this isn't squared, same here. goes to zero sooner than if that's not squared. And it gets us right back to where uh, we had our logarithmic amplifier. So the thing is, is when I chain these together, what I can get is a more accurate um, transfer function at the expense of having oops, excuse me, two more op amps.